Good morning. Welcome back to the channel. Joe and Lisa with Joe Lee Farms in Ecuador. We have just a quick update about health insurance in Ecuador. Those of you who watched our video about health insurance in Ecuador, I know you probably gained a lot of insight with that video. However, we have to correct something. We've learned in the last 48 hours that some of the information given there was incorrect. So we want to make sure that we um, clear that up. We try real hard to uh, give you the best information that we can. We usually let you know when it's our opinion and when it's valid information. So, uh, and that's one of the reasons we started this channel was so people could get good information. There's a lot of contradictory information depending on who you talk to and what circumstances come up. And so recently some circumstances came up and we got more information. Yeah, so as many of you know, um, I've had a mitral valve replacement in the heart about 15 years ago. And so some people say it may last forever. You know, other people say, well, you're going to have to eventually have it replaced. So health insurance was kind of a concern for us because I can tell you that when I had this done 15 years ago, it was about $140,000 in the States. Um, now it's about a quarter million in the States. So uh, we recently were informed of a couple of uh, gentlemen had to have his valve replaced. I don't know if it was aortic or mitral, but it was done in Loha. The bill was about $60,000. So um, he's on the same insurance that I'm on, the Confia Med. And uh, what we found out, even though we had the interview with our agent here, um, we were under the understanding that once we met the two-year exclusion, mm -hmm. that we would be 100% covered. Turns out that's not the truth. No, and one of the insurance agents that I talked to, she says after your two-year exclusion, and this is where it gets a little funny, it's whatever the law allows. So it's not an insurance company thing, it's an Ecuadorian law. So what happens is, is you go through your two-year exclusion, and yes, they'll now pay for it, but only $9,000 worth. So the way they come arrive at that figure is everything here is based off the average Ecuadorian monthly wage, the minimum wage. Mm -hmm. The government sets a minimum wage of $450 per month here um, is the minimum Ecuadorian wage. So it's 20 times the minimum Ecuadorian wage, which is $9,000. Yeah. So uh, we have a $5,000 deductible, and then they'll pay $9,000 toward that sixty grand, if that's the figure. Right. And so there's only one insurance company, which is IESS. It's kind of like um, the Ecuadorian Social Security plan. And you can get it covered through IESS. And what my agent told me was most people have IESS for anything major that happens. And then they have a private insurance plan. But there's really no reason to, to buy a more extens expensive plan thinking that you're going to get greater coverage for your pre-existing conditions because you're not. They're only going to pay that $9,000. Now, IESS is not a Social Security. It's actually closer to uh, what we call Medicare in the U.S. Right. And so um, we've been told by our agent in Cuenca that the um, IESS would take you in immediately for an emergency. Let's say you're having a heart attack. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times they don't have the right specialist and they will refer you out to another hospital with the proper specialist, but that they will pay. Um, and that it, uh, it does take a long time to get a regular appointments with IESS. That's one of the reasons we don't have them. Uh, they have a lot of problems right now with that, with the IESS hospitals. And that's why they're saying most people will get the IESS to cover major medical emergencies and then have a private plan to cover anything else you need to do. And so for some of my age, IESS is 70 to $80 a month. Um, my Confia Med plan right now is running me like 68 or so. Mm -hmm. um, Lisa's plan with Blue Box Company out of Cuenca is $39 a month. It covers up to $6,000 per incident. Right. So it has a small deductible, I don't know, $500, $750, something like that. Yeah, it's a small deductible. It's almost not even noticeable. My mom's on it as well, and she broke her sh shoulder. And they, because we went to a private hospital, they paid 80%. Now, if you go to in-network um, 
hospital or physician, they pay 90%. Correct. So it was extremely good experience with them. I had a different insurance company for the first two years that we were here. I had an eye surgery, which was 2500 I had a hernia surgery, which is 1100 They paid 100%. However, after the second year, they canceled me. They said I was too old. Yeah. So, um, yeah, they just... That was a great plan. Yeah, it was, it was only 600 a year. So we want to correct you so that, you know, correct this information so that you're as, as aware as you can be. And I, I encourage you to reach out. We're going to put the Blue Box agent's uh, phone number and stuff in the description box so you can reach out to Blue Box yourself and get firsthand information. And they do have English-speaking agents. Yes. So, you know, we had the, the uh, policy. We thought we read it correctly. We were told that it did, um, you know, cover everything after the two-year exclusion, and it simply was not the case. Yeah. It's been the law for a very long time here that way. Now... If you're an Ecuadorian attorney or an Ecuadorian insurance agent and you have information that we don't know about mm -hmm. and you want to leave that in the, in the uh, comments, we would love to hear from you. Definitely. Definitely reach out because we'd love to be able to expand this a little bit and uh, give people a better guess um, of what's going to happen. Do you? Because a big question is, is do you get rid of your Medicare when you leave the U.S. because this, it doesn't help you here? Um, so some say keep your Medicare and go back to the States. For us, we don't feel like that's a good option for us. Not a good option for me. Um, but, you know, I've been off Medicare Part B for a little while now. I would have to pay a penalty to re-enroll. And you can only re-enroll between January 1st and March 21st, I think. Yeah. What I've been told anyway. Yeah. So um, maybe keep your Medicare. Personally, I'm just going to make sure I have that money in a CD uh, poked away. So if I ever do need the heart surgery, um, you know, we've got the cash and we can get it done. Yeah. And we don't have to go to an IESS hospital, um, which I prefer not to personally. Some people rave about them and other people have nothing but terrible things to say, which is kind of everything here in Ecuador. <laughs> well, I, not even just in Ecuador. I mean... When you're dealing with lawyers or physicians or any professional industry, people have good experiences. People have bad experiences. That's just life. So the blue box that Lisa's mom and she are on, you know, is a, it meets the visa requirement. Mm -hmm. And it's great for these small surgeries and little things that you're going to have happen, broken arms, what have you. Most things here are under $5,000. They really are. And I even asked the agent, I said, so... Really, there's no reason to buy a more expensive plan because um, because you've got pre-existing conditions. It's not going to cover it anyway. And she says, yeah, that's correct. So um, for me, stomach is not going to be covered. My heart's not going to be covered. My eyes are not going to be covered, except up to that $9,000 figure. Yeah. And quite frankly, my eyes are not going to be covered anyway. Well, but so on, on my plan, it's only $39 a month. And... It covers up to $6,000. I don't have a $5,000 deductible on it. So I kind of think you're coming out better paying less. And Lisa's mom is about to turn 80. So her plan is $10 more. She's paying like $40 a month. This year, because her birthday comes within the year, she, she got upped by $10. So. But $49 a month, I mean, who can really complain? Yeah, I mean, that's really nothing. <laughs> no, it's really um, not. Yeah, not a lot of money. So I uh, hope that information helps. Again, we apologize. We didn't mean to mislead anyone. That is what we believe and what we were told. And, um, and so as those of you who watched that interview got that same information that we got, and it's simply uh, not correct, and I'm glad we checked into it. Yeah, and it's, it's a little tricky because even when I was talking to another agent, she says, after your two-year exclusion, we pay what the law allows. And so it's, it's a law here in Ecuador that they're not going to pay more than 20 times the, the average wage. So if so. we get any new information, we'll update you on that. Um, again, everybody can make a mistake and hope that you'll forgive us all. And uh, keep watching. Thumbs up. <laughs>